Hey there, welcome to another ESO build guide. I'm Dying Legacy and this is the Winterborn build, a magical warden for solo content. Packing incredible AoE damage and built-in healing, this warden will have no issue clearing veteran arenas and dungeons. This is a quick build guide, we'll be going over the race, attributes, mundus, food, potions, gears, skills, passives and champion points slottables. The info will be minimal so I'll only be going over what's necessary. However, do feel free to comment and let me know if you'd like a full detailed guide or if there is anything I could do better. With that all out of the way, let's dig into the Winterborn build. Starting with the race, you are free to use and play as you want, but if you're looking for a few suggestions, I would recommend either the Breton for sustain, the High Elf for more spell damage, or the Khajiit for extra critical damage. For the attributes, we are putting 64 points into Magicka, and for our Munda Stones, we'll be taking the Lover Munda Stone for increased physical and spell penetration for solo content, and for group content, we'll be taking the Thief Munda Stone for increased weapon and spell critical strike. For our food, we'll be using the Clockwork Citrus Fillet to increase our max health, health recovery, max magicka, and magicka recovery. It is a gold quality food, so it can be expensive to make or pick up from the guild store. In that case, you can use the Witch Mother's Potent Brew. It does have reduced stats and no health recovery, but it is much cheaper and the stats difference is minuscule. On to our potions now, which we'll be using for those harder and more drawn out encounters. We'll be using Essence of Spell Power potions. These will give us Major Sorcery, Major Prophecy, Major Intellect, and will restore Magicka immediately. You can pick these up cheap at the guild store, or you can use the Alchemy Station to make your own. If you lack the gold or the materials, you can also use Essence of Magicka potions, which will grant us Major Intellect and restore Magicka immediately. When in those tougher situations, it's best to use whatever you have, and with the Essence of Magicka potions, you can easily find them on enemies around Tamriel, so they're never in short supply. And with that all out of the way, we'll move on to the gear. We have a few options for the build, which includes a Maelstrom Staff and a Ring of the Pale Order, but they aren't necessary and we have options around it, in case you haven't got your hands on them yet, or if you just don't feel like using them. But first off, we're using seven pieces of light armor, all with the Divine's Trait and Magic Enchants. For our weapons, we are using an Ice Staff on our front bar with a Frost Enchant and the Charge Trait. And for our back bar, we're using an Ice Staff with a Weapon Damage Enchant and the Infuse Trait. And for our Jewelry, we are using Spell Damage Enchants and the Bloodthirsty Traits. Moving on to the sets themselves, starting with the body pieces. For the chest, waist, hands, legs and feet, we are taking the Whirl of the Depths set, which is a trial set found in Dreadsail's Reef. There is a perfected version from Veteran Difficulty that adds extra critical damage and the unperfected is from normal difficulty. The set itself adds weapon and spell damage and gives us minor slayer at all times. And when we deal damage with a light attack, you'll apply a dot that deals frost damage over eight seconds. And when the effect ends, a five meter whirlpool is created under the target's feet for six seconds that deals frost damage every second. Another set we can use is the frostbite set that you can get from Blackwood Overland content, or you could buy it from a guild vendor. The set itself gives weapon damage, spell damage and critical chance and the set itself will increase the damage of our frost abilities and increase damage against chilled enemies and enemies afflicted with minor brittle. For our jewellery and weapons we are using the Icy Conjurer set which can be found in the DLC Frost Vault dungeon. This set gives us max magicka, spell damage and offensive penetration and applying a minor debuff to our enemies causes us to summon an Ice Wraith that charges at the target dealing frost damage over 10 seconds. Now, for our monster sets, we're using Ice Heart. The helm is gotten from Direfrost Keep on Veteran, and the shoulder is gotten from the Undaunted Vendors outside any of the three major faction cities. Ice Heart will add critical chance, and when we deal critical damage, we have a chance to gain a shield for six seconds that also deals frost damage in a five meter radius. If you happen to use the Ring of the Pale Order that's gotten from the Antiquity System and heals us for 20% of the damage that we do, You'll want to wear a piece of our jewellery set on either our helm or our shoulders, meaning we'll only be using one piece of a monster set, in which case we'll be using Slime Craw, which is gotten from the Wayrest Sewers 1, be it the helm from the Veteran Difficulty, or you can get the shoulder from the Undaunted Vendors. We're only using one, one piece of this set, so it's going to give us some additional critical chance to help beef up the build a bit, to help go along with the extra healing from the Ring of the Pale Order ring. 
We can also use a Maelstrom Ice Staff on this build by replacing our back bar weapon with it. The Maelstrom Staff is gotten from Maelstrom Arena. There is a perfected version from the Veteran difficulty that adds extra offensive penetration that the unperfected version from the normal difficulty does not have. It's only a minor difference and doesn't matter at all that much. And when using the Maelstrom Staff on our back bar, our light and heavy attacks deal extra damage to the enemies in our wall of elements. And that just about covers the gear for the build. And next on our list is the skills, starting with our front bar. First up is Fetcher Infection, which is morphed from Swarm and found in the Animal Companion skill line. This will cause Fetcher Flies to attack our enemy for 10 seconds, dealing magic damage and applying minor vulnerability. Next is Screaming Cliff Racer, which is morphed from Dive. Uh, you can find this in the Animal Companion skill line, which which commands a cliff racer to die bomb an enemy dealing magic damage. If the enemy is more than 7 meters away, it'll knock him off balance, and it also deals more damage the further away the enemies are. We are also using Barb Trap, which is morphed from Trap Beast in the Fighter's Guild skill line. You'll drop a trap that when triggered deals bleed damage, and it also deals extra bleed damage over 18 seconds and grants us minor force. Next is Deep Fissure, which is morphed from Scorch in the Animal Companion skill line. When activated, Shocks will attack after 3 seconds for a ton of magic damage and enemies hit will be afflicted with Major and Minor Breach for 10 seconds. We're also using Arctic Blast, morphed from Arctic Wind found in the Winter's Embrace skill line. This will instantly heal us and heal us over 5 seconds and while active will deal frost damage to enemies in our vicinity every 1 second. For the ultimate on the front bar, we are using Ice Comet, which is morphed from Meteor in the Mage's Guild skill line. This will hit enemies with a comet that deals frost damage, knocking them down and stunning them, and also slowing their movement speed and causing them to take frost damage over 13 seconds. With the front bar covered, it's the back bar's turn, starting with Unstable Wall of Frost, morphed from Wall of Elements in the Destruction skill line. This will create an icy barrier that deals frost damage to enemies standing in it and giving us a frost shield for 6 seconds. Next is Winter's Revenge, morphed from Impaling Shards, found in the Winter's Embrace skill line. This will spawn ice shards to skewer enemies dealing frost damage for 12 seconds, slowing enemies' movement and has a higher chance to cause the chilled status effect. We're also using Scalding Ruin, morphed from Fire Ruin in the Mage's Guild skill line. The Ruin blasts enemies in the target area dealing flame damage and additional flame damage over 14 seconds. We are also using Ice Cloak, morphed from Frost Cloak, found in the Winter's Embrace skill line. This grants us Major Resolve for 25 seconds and Minor Protection. Next up is Blue Betty, morphed this from Betty Netch, which is found in the Animal Companion skill line. Blue Betty lasts for 25 seconds and will restore our Magicka over its duration and grants us Major Brutality and Sorcery. And lastly, our ultimate for the back bar is Northern Storm, morphed from Sleet Storm and is found in the Winter's Embrace skill line. This lasts for 8 seconds and deals frost damage to enemies around us and slowing their movement speed and will increase our weapon and spell damage by 300 for 30 seconds. And it also grants us major protection. That covers the skills, so now it's time to cover the passives, starting with our class passives. In the Animal Companion skill line, we'll be taking Bond with Nature, Savage Beast, Flourish and Advanced Species. In the Green Balance skill line, we'll only be taking Maturation, as any of the other passives won't give us anything because we're not using any of the Green Balance moves. Next is the Winter's Embrace passives. We'll be taking Glacial Presence, Frozen Armor, Icy Aura and Piercing Cold. We're using Destruction Staffs on this build, so we'll be hopping into the Destruction Staff skill line. In here, we'll be taking everything, which includes Trifocus, Penetrating Magic, Elemental Force, Ancient Knowledge, and Destruction Expert. We're also using 7 pieces of Light Armor, so we'll be hopping into the Light Armor skill line. In here, we're going to be taking Grace, Evocation, Spell Warding, Prodigy, and Concentration. Next up is the Guild Passives, starting with the Fighter's Guild skill line. In here, we want Slayer, Banish the Wicked, and Skill Tracker. Over in the Mage's Guild skill line, we want Mage Depth, Everlasting Magic, Magicka Controller, and Might of the Guild. And our last guild skill line is the Undaunted skill line, where we'll be taking Undaunted Command and Undaunted Metal. Next, we'll be popping into the Assault skill line. We want to put one point into Continuous Attack, as this will give us Major Gallop. However, don't put a second point in, as this is going to add nothing extra. We just need to put in one point. 
Next is our racial passives. You'll want to read over this as it's very specific to whatever race you've chosen. But whatever race you have chosen, make sure you take everything. As every point is crucial and they will be different depending on the races. And lastly, in the alchemy skill line, we want medicinal use. This is going to increase the uptime on our potions. Meaning that when a potion ends, the cooldown will have ended so we can always have a potion active. And that covers all the passives that we need, so we'll be jumping straight on to the champion point slottables. And we're starting with the warfare tree. In here, we want to take fighting finesse. We want to take deadly aim. Thaumaturge. And we want master at arms. Next up is the warfare tree. And in here, we want to take boundless vitality. Fortified. Rejuvenation. And we also want to take siphoning spells. And lastly is the craft skill line. Now it doesn't really matter what you take in here because everything's kind of situational and dependent on the kind of player that you are. But for myself as a suggestion, especially for solo play, I like to take treasure hunter, rationeer, liquid efficiency and steed's blessing. These were all very handy skills for doing soloing. However, it's up to yourself, so choose what you want and play however you want. And that covers the Winterborn build. Uh, it's been a while, as I've had a few PC issues, so I haven't uploaded in price. I think it's been about a month. Uh, but I'm back. Um, this is also a bit quicker of a video than usual. I I'm trying to find places to cut out the unnecessary information to a degree. Um, I'm not quite sure if it's worked or not, but please leave a comment and let me know. Maybe it's a bit too quick. Maybe you want a bit more detail. I, I'm not completely sure. I want to make these as quick as possible and as user friendly as possible. There are a lot of people who really don't care about the information. They just want to know what to pick and that's it. And I know for a lot of new players, the, the extra information means nothing because you don't understand what they're for just yet. And a lot of people do prefer just to kind of learn as they go. But anywho, thank you so much for watching and thanks for joining me once again. Um, I'm very glad to be back. I hope this build was very useful to you. Um, if you want more like this, please like and subscribe. And if you're looking for some banter or, you know, want to share your thoughts, please comment below. You can also find me over on Twitch at twitch.tv slash dyinglegacy. Um, I'm live now, like right now. Um, other than that, you've been fantastic. I've been Dying Legacy, and till next time, guys, keep being awesome.